NASA says its Voyager 1 probe, the most distant human-made object in the universe, far beyond Earth, Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 drift into interstellar space, uncovering mysteries that challenge our understanding of the cosmos. Voyager 1, which is the farthest spacecraft from Earth, will actually never be overtaken by, by New Horizons. Originally launched to explore the outer planets, these silent travelers have now become humanity's first interstellar explorers. Then you can steal orbital energy from planets. Recently, Voyager 1 sent back faint signals that revealed something unexpected in the vast void between the stars. This discovery has scientists buzzing, reshaping our view of the space just beyond our solar system. Could this revelation support Graham Hancock's theories on ancient civilizations and hidden knowledge? Through which the soul would travel to reach the Milky Way, which the ancient Egyptians called the Winding Waterway. Join us as we explore what Voyager uncovered in the dark expanse of interstellar space. This story doesn't begin in the lonely reaches of interstellar space, but back in the 1970s with an extraordinary cosmic opportunity. Once every 176 years, the outer planets align in such a way that a spacecraft can visit them all using gravity assists, slingshot maneuvers that propel it from one giant world to the next. NASA seized this rare moment with the creation of the Voyager program. In 1977, Voyager 2 launched first, followed shortly by Voyager 1, embarking on the ambitious grand tour of the gas and ice giants, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. Their discoveries were groundbreaking. Voyager 1 captured unprecedented views of Jupiter's great red spot and revealed volcanic activity on its moon, Io, the first active volcanoes observed beyond Earth. Saturn's stunning rings and Titan's hazy atmosphere came into focus. Voyager 2 journeyed even farther, offering humanity its first close-up glimpses of the icy, tilted worlds Uranus and Neptune. Yet this was just the beginning. Powered by plutonium-based generators built to endure, the Voyagers pressed onward, venturing toward the edge of the Sun's influence. Their mission evolved into the Voyager Interstellar Mission, VIM. When will New Horizons overtake the two Voyager spacecraft as the furthest man-made object from Earth? Aiming to cross the heliosphere's boundary and enter the vast, uncharted interstellar medium. Today, Voyager 1 drifts over 163 astronomical units, AU, from Earth. That's 163 times the distance between Earth and the Sun, roughly 15 billion miles, or 24 billion kilometers. Even light, racing at 186,000 miles per second, takes more than 22 hours to bridge that gap. Imagine a command sent from Earth today won't reach Voyager 1 until nearly a full day later, and its reply won't return until the day after that. Voyager 2, traveling a different route, is currently over 136 AU away. Both probes remain tiny sparks of human curiosity, venturing across the vast ocean of interstellar space, still faithfully sending data home on technology built nearly 50 years ago. Their durability is astounding, a lasting tribute to the brilliance of their engineers. Yet it's what they're encountering now far beyond the familiar boundaries of our solar system that leads us to this remarkable story. To grasp Voyager 1's recent discovery, we first need to understand the invisible boundary it crossed. Our sun is more than a beacon of light and heat. It continuously emits a stream of charged particles known as the solar wind. This wind forms a colossal bubble around the solar system called the heliosphere, a protective shield that deflects much of the dangerous cosmic radiation from deep space. However, this bubble has limits. Billions of miles from the sun, the solar wind slows as it collides with the interstellar medium, the thin soup of gas, dust, and magnetic fields that fills the void between stars. The point where the solar wind drops from supersonic to subsonic speeds is known as the termination shock, which Voyager 1 crossed in 2004 followed by Voyager 2 in 2007. Beyond lies the heliosheath, a chaotic boundary zone, and eventually the heliopause, the true edge of our sun's influence, marking entry into interstellar space. 
Scientists had long developed models predicting what would happen when Voyager 1 crossed into interstellar space. They expected a sharp drop in solar wind particles and a surge in galactic cosmic rays. The magnetic field, too, was supposed to shift, with the Sun's influence yielding entirely to the magnetic field of the interstellar medium. When Voyager 1 finally crossed the heliopause in August 2012, many of these predictions came true. Solar particles dropped dramatically, while galactic cosmic rays increased. Clear signs that Voyager had left the protective bubble of the solar system. But one thing defied expectations. The magnetic field direction didn't change as anticipated. This suggested a more complicated interaction between solar and interstellar fields. Next, NASA says its Voyager 1 probe, the most distant human-made object in the universe, is sending usable information to Earth again. Hinting that scientists had underestimated the complexity of this boundary. So, what has Voyager 1 found out there that's making waves now, years after crossing the heliopause? It wasn't a dramatic event or alien signal, but something far subtler. Using its plasma wave system, PWS, originally designed to detect radio emissions from planetary magnetospheres, Voyager 1 picked up a faint, persistent signal. This narrow-band hum comes from the interstellar plasma itself. Plasma, often called the fourth state of matter, is a charged gas where electrons have been stripped from atoms, creating a soup of ions and free electrons. It fills most of the universe, from stars to the space between them. And because plasma interacts with electric and magnetic fields, it can carry wave oscillations rippling through this cosmic sea. Voyager 1's detection of this steady, low-level hum from the interstellar plasma offers a new window into the vast, dynamic environment beyond our solar system, revealing it as anything but silent. The hum detected by Voyager 1 isn't sound in the traditional sense. It's not something you could hear with your ears. Instead, it's a measurement of electron plasma oscillations. The vibrations of electrons in the interstellar plasma at a very specific low frequency, around 3 kHz. Voyager's plasma wave system, PWS, antennas pick up these electric field oscillations. While Voyager had previously detected similar plasma waves, those were brief bursts triggered by solar shock waves, like coronal mass ejections reaching Voyager and momentarily disturbing the interstellar plasma. These bursts were valuable because their frequency revealed the plasma's density, helping scientists map the environment beyond the heliosphere. However, in 2021, researchers reported something different, a persistent, faint hum. Unlike the brief solar-triggered bursts, this signal has been nearly continuous since 2017. Though much weaker, it carries the same critical information as the density of the plasma surrounding Voyager 1. This continuous measurement has revealed that the plasma density around Voyager 1 is gradually increasing as it moves deeper into interstellar space. More surprisingly, the baseline density recorded by this hum is higher and more variable than many models had predicted for the local interstellar medium just outside the heliopause. Rather than drifting through a calm, empty void, Voyager is navigating a subtly active environment. This hum isn't just background noise. It's the quiet whisper of the galaxy itself, offering real-time insights into the unseen dynamics of interstellar space and revealing that this region is far more dynamic and complex than once believed. Voyager 1's detection of a faint, persistent hum from the plasma between the stars might not sound alarming. No space monsters or looming crises, but it delivered a shock that's reshaping scientific thinking. The shock here isn't about danger, it's about realization forcing experts back to the drawing board. First, it challenges our models of the local interstellar medium, LISM. For decades, Scientists built simulations predicting the density, temperature, and magnetic fields of the space just outside the heliopause using data from telescopes, missions like Ulysses, and theoretical frameworks. Voyager 1's direct plasma density readings, however, don't match up. The interstellar medium appears denser and more variable than expected, suggesting that the interaction between the heliosphere and interstellar space is more dynamic than we thought. It's like using a map only to find the coastline isn't where it should be. Second, the persistence of the hum itself is baffling. Past plasma oscillations were short bursts triggered by solar shock waves, but this hum has been steady with no obvious driver. 
What's exciting these plasma waves are so consistently? Is it low-level turbulence, thermal fluctuations, cosmic rays, or magnetic interactions? Scientists don't know yet. This unexplained phenomenon opens new questions, pushing the boundaries of what we understand about the space beyond our solar system. Third, this finding adds to a growing list of surprises Voyager encountered in interstellar space. For instance, the magnetic field data showed that the interstellar magnetic field just outside the heliopause aligned unexpectedly with the Sun's magnetic field, wrapping around the heliosphere rather than showing a distinct shift as anticipated. Additionally, the galactic cosmic rays, while increasing as expected, exhibited complexities and variations that defied predictions. Together, these discoveries, the density hum, the magnetic field puzzle, and the cosmic ray anomalies paint a picture of the interstellar boundary region as far more intricate and less understood than previously thought. It serves as a humbling reminder that our theoretical models are approximations and that direct measurement is essential. Finally, it's important to consider the context. Getting any data from Voyager 1, especially surprising data, is remarkable. The probe is facing the harsh conditions of interstellar space radiation, dust impacts, and extreme cold, all while running on limited power and 1970s-era technology. Recently, Voyager 1 faced a major glitch with its flight data system, sending back scrambled data for months. Engineers using commands that took nearly two days to reach the probe eventually fixed the issue. Despite these challenges, Voyager continues to send back valuable data, making discoveries like this plasma hum even more extraordinary. Voyager 1 isn't alone in its journey through interstellar space. Its sibling, Voyager 2, crossed the heliopause in 2018. Live science reports that Voyager 2 detected a fiery plasma wall in the heliopause where the sun's outward blowing solar winds clash with cosmic rays. Though it did so at a different location and time, having data from both probes is invaluable for comparison. Did Voyager 2 detect a similar persistent plasma hum? The data analysis is ongoing, but early indications suggest that Voyager 2 also detected plasma oscillations tied to density measurements of the interstellar medium. However, since Voyager 2 crossed at a different point in the solar cycle and in a distinct region of the heliosphere's boundary, the specifics may differ. Comparing findings from both probes is essential to understand whether the density structures Voyager 1 detected are localized phenomena or if they represent a broader feature of the local interstellar medium. Are these density variations uniform or patchy? Is the hum present everywhere or is it confined to certain regions? These comparisons will help clarify whether Voyager 1's discoveries are specific to its path or indicative of general characteristics in interstellar space near our Sun. It's also important to remember how unique this data is. While missions like NASA's IBEX, Interstellar Boundary Explorer, also study the boundaries of the heliosphere, they do so remotely by detecting energetic neutral atoms, ENAs, created by interactions between solar wind and interstellar gas. IBEX has provided fantastic global maps of the heliosphere's interaction zone, but it's like looking at a distant shore through binoculars. You can see the shape, but you can't feel the sand or measure the water temperature. Voyager 1 and 2, however, are the only probes actually inside, sampling the plasma, particles, and magnetic fields directly. This space truth is crucial for interpreting the remote sensing data from IBEX and refining our understanding of the heliosphere's true structure. So, what does this mean for our cosmic neighborhood? Our solar system is currently traveling through the local interstellar cloud, LIC, a diffuse region of gas and dust about 30 light years across. Understanding the properties of the plasma just outside our heliosphere, its density, temperature, turbulence, and magnetic field is crucial for understanding how our solar system interacts with this cloud. Is the LIC uniform? How does its structure affect the heliosphere's shape and strength? These aren't just academic questions. The heliosphere protects us from harmful galactic cosmic rays, which can impact satellite operations, influence climate, though debated, and pose risks to space travel. Voyager's findings suggest that this interaction zone is more complex, and the LIC might be less uniform on small scales than we previously thought. These discoveries also guide future missions. While a dedicated interstellar probe is still decades away due to technological challenges, 
Understanding the space just outside the heliopause is essential for planning such missions. What conditions will the probe face? What instruments will be needed? Voyager's unexpected findings provide invaluable reconnaissance, shaping the questions the next generation of space explorers will need to answer. While the discoveries made by the Voyagers continue to be profound, we must confront a difficult reality. The probes won't last forever. Their power is supplied by radioisotope thermoelectric generators, RTGs, which convert the heat from the radioactive decay of plutonium-238 into electricity. As the plutonium decays, the power output decreases by about 4 watts per year. NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory engineers have performed miracles to keep the probes operational for so long. Over the years, they've implemented power-saving strategies, shutting down non-essential heaters and instruments. Critical decisions have to be made regarding which instruments receive priority as power dwindles. Right now, the plasma wave system, which detects the interstellar hum, along with instruments measuring magnetic fields, plasma particles, and cosmic rays, are still deemed essential. However, the clock is ticking. By 2025 to 2030, there may not be enough power left to run even a single scientific instrument. The transmitters, which require substantial power, will eventually go silent as well. The situation is a race against time. Every piece of data received now is invaluable, captured from regions we may not reach again for many decades, if ever. The recent technical glitch on Voyager 1 served as a stark reminder of the probe's vulnerability. While engineers managed to recover operations, the aging hardware and shrinking power reserves mean each new byte of data is a rare gift. The Voyagers are truly in their final act, pushing the boundaries of exploration until their power fades into the vast interstellar night.